This video extends our logic to be able to deal with things from a set rather than just one thing at a time. So in order to do that, we need to get a new concept of a propositional function. Um, a prop propositional function takes some inputs, um, usually expressed as variables, and then depending on the values of those inputs, uh, produces an output. And the output because it's a propositional function, is basically a proposition, which means it has a truth value, true or false. And that's what we usually are concerned about, is what's the truth value of the resulting proposition. This, uh, this construct is going to enable us to reason about program correctness, reason about um, definitions that help us in the analysis of algorithms, um, and has lots of other applications um, in calculus and, and science. But for us, mostly what it'll be about is being able to come up with good definitions of what it means for an algorithm to be faster than another algorithm. So just to be a little bit more uh, specific about this, a predicate or a propositional function is a statement that contains variables and it's a proposition for specific values of those variables. So for example, uh, here's a propositional function, x plus 2 equals 7. Now, if we just stated that way, that sentence is not a proposition, right? It doesn't have a value of true or false. But if we assign some value to x, say 5, then, then it has a value of true. Or if we assign some value 6 to x, then it would have a value of false. Now, let's talk about representing a propositional function. But before we do that, let me do one more quick example here. And just to emphasize the fact that the truth value of the predicate depends on the value that's assigned to its variables. So, here's another example. If we have x plus 2 equals 7, if we have let x equal 1, then obviously 1 plus 2 equals 7 is a false proposition. In the same vein, if we replace the x with a 5, then 5 plus 2 does equal 7, in which case the propositional function is true. So in general, though, we're going to want to be, have some notation for general propositional functions. And so this is the notation we'll use. We generally use a capital P or a capital Q similarly to the way we use small p and small q for propositions, but now we use the capitals, the uppercase, to represent the functions. And then the variables, as usual for a function, we put inside the parentheses. A little terminology here, uh, not that important, but an example for a propositional function, p of x, is a value for which p of x is true. So 5 is an example for x plus 2 equals 7. A counterexample is a value of x for which p of x is false. So x equals 1 is a counterexample for the propositional function p of x. So on this slide, let's look at another example and talk a little bit more about, introduce some more, some more terminology. So consider a statement like m squared bigger than m. Okay, where m is from some set of numbers. The statement, as like all propositional functions, it might be true for some values of m, but not for others. Okay, so how do we be more precise about this whole thing? We need to specify what are the possible values for m, and we call that the universe of the domain of discourse. So remember, in a function, just a normal function that you studied in high school, you talked about the domain of a function and the range of a function. So the universe or domain of discourse corresponds to the domain of the function. When we look at the variable that's contained in, say, the, in the definition of the propositional function, um, if it's not specified, we say that it's a free variable. If the variable actually has a specific value, if we specify say that m is equal to 3, then we say that m is bound. So, for example, you might have a question like this. For what positive integers is p of m equal to, where it's equal to, that propositional function is equal to m squared greater than m plus 8, 
when is that propositional function true? The domain is the positive integers. So we restrict ourselves to that, and then we say, well, when is this true? Well, it turns out that that's true for the integers greater than 3. Namely, if you plug in 3 here, you see that 9 is not greater than 3 plus 8, 11. So it's false for an integer 3. But if you plug in 4, then 16 is bigger than 12. And so it's true. And that's going to be true for all integers bigger than or equal to 4. So before we go on to this t slide, it might be a good time for you to pause, take stock, make sure that you understand all the definitions. Um, but so now I'm going to talk about two really important uh, symbols called quantifiers um, that enable us to look at propositional functions and make statements about whether they're true all the time, some of the time, or never true for a given domain of discourse. So the first one we'll look at is the existential quantifier. So this is the statement for some x, the propositional function is true. And we read this either for some x, p of x, or there exists x such that p of x is true. And when you use the existential quantifier and quantify, the terminology is you quantify the propositional function, then that means that you now turn this into this statement here, there exists x, p of x, is a proposition. It has a definite truth value. So if there is an x such that p of x is true, then, it's, then this proposition, this new proposition is true. If no x makes p of x true, for all the x's in the domain of a discourse, if none of them make p of x true, then it has the truth value false. So, for example, if p of x is, again, x plus 2 equals 7, with the integers as the universe of discourse, then, indeed, there exists a p of x, there exists an x such that p of x is true, S namely 5. 5 is an x that makes p of x is true, namely p of 5 is a true statement, and that's how we would write it. However, if we looked at, say, the propositional function q of x equals 2x, is 2x equals 7, and again the universe of discourse is still the integers, then there exists x such that q of x is true is a false statement, right? Because there's no x that makes q of x true, where x is an integer. So for that universe of discourse, there exists x such that q of x, that's a false proposition. On the other hand, if we had a different universe of discourse, a different domain of discourse, namely the rational numbers, then there exists x, q of x, would be a true statement, right? Because if it's the rational numbers, we could let x be 3 and a half, and then 2 times x would be equal to 7. Again, the symbol, sort of this up backwards capital E, is called the existential quantifier. In the same way, if we look at a different kind of sentence, we say, for all x, p of x, so now we've got, again, we've got a propositional function, p of x, and we say, for all x, p of x, we could also say it differently. We could say, for any x, p of x, for every x, p of x, and for each x, p of x. Those are all different ways of saying the same thing. And what this is, this is a way to say that for all the possible x's in the domain of discourse, for every one of them, p of x is going to be true. Okay, And so this quantified statement, again, is read for all x, p of x. That's going to have a definite truth value. If p of x is true for all the x in the domain of discourse, it's going to be true. If it's only true, if it's not true for all of them, then it's going to be false. So, for example, if p of x is a equal to x plus 2 equals 7, and the universe of discourse is the integers, then for all x, p of x is false. Because obviously, if you put in x equals 1, then 1 plus 2 is not equal to 7. Okay, So it's not, this propositional function is not true for all the possible values of x. However, if you had something like this, where a, 
a propositional function q of x represents this equality that x plus 1 squared equals x squared plus 2x plus 1, then it is true that for all x, q of x is true. Again, assuming that the universe of discourse is, for example, the integers or the real numbers. So things where that formula holds. This symbol is called the universal quantifier. So just to recap a little bit here, the existential quantifier basically tells you whether or not there is some value in the, in the domain of discourse that makes the propositional function true. The universal quantifier says that all the values in the domain of discourse make the propositional function true. Okay, so that's quite a bit of information for you to absorb. And make sure before you come to class that you have a really good handle on all these different definitions. Namely, what a propositional function or a predicate is, how the values for the variables in the propositional function take on, can take on different values from a particular set and what the name of that set is, um, and then how the existential quantifier works and how the universal quantifier works. And you should be able to answer questions like, given some domain of discourse, uh, where for all x, give a determinate domain of this course, where for all x, x squared is bigger than or equal to x. And similarly, you should be able to define a domain of this course where for all x, x squared greater than x is false. So in other words, you should be able to change the domain of this course so quantified functions are either true or false.